Live from the Austin Convention Center in Austin, Texas, it's The Cube at Dell World 2014. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. We're back at Austin, everybody. Welcome to Dell World 2014. This is theCUBE. Matt Walken is here. He's the Vice President and General Manager of Dell's Information Management Business. Matt, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks very much. I'm very excited to have Matt here because a lot of people don't know about Dell's software business. It's about a $2 billion business. People don't think of Dell as a software company, you know, traditionally, but you helped build that company, uh, that part of the company, that software business. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we started a few years ago. We looked at Dell as a company and wanted to be able to solve more of the customer problem. We were being asked by the customer, hey, we're providing part of the solution here, can you help us out even more? And we looked at where we can help the customer most and it was in the software area. And so we, for about uh, four years ago, worked on a strategy to sort of create a software group that was relevant to Dell, that was going after the problems that customers were seeing and that experienced a lot of challenges for customers and hence growth for us. And so we really concentrated on systems management, security, and then information management, the group that I run. Okay, so, there's, so you break down that multi-billion dollar, like what I'm calling almost a two billion dollar business into three areas, there's security, systems management, and information yes. management. What's inside of information management? So information management, we do everything from managing the data in its raw state at a database tier, the database itself, up through integration of the data and or of application data, and then up into the database tier with Dell as our main, main partner on the hardware side and the great partners we have there, into advanced analytics. Uh, one of the main things we look at as data grows in this environment is it's going to grow beyond human scale. And how do we help customers take advantage of data through systems and capabilities in order to reach that state? So we look at how do you manage the base tier of the data? How do you integrate the data in from either your applications and or data sources? And then how do you take advantage of and drive analytics to actually have actionable insights that really change your business? And in today's day and age, it's not a cost setting issue to do analytics, it's actually a revenue generator to find new customer segments, save customers from leaving your service, and reach new heights for the business. So as I was walking the floor last night, I saw some Oracle integrations that you mm -hmm. guys are doing, it caught my eye. Oracle's an interesting partner for you guys because, you know, <laughs> Oracle basically said, we want to get out of the low end x86 business. Mm -hmm. You guys love that business. Um, Oracle competes heavily with IBM. HP and Oracle have this urinary Olympics, so they're like not talking to each other. And, uh, and so you guys make a perfect partner for a company like Oracle. I wonder if you could talk about Oracle specifically, and then I want to talk about other database integrations. You know, Oracle's been a, uh, a great uh, competition for us over time. Uh, we actually had developed a, the strongest database environment, the, the developer environment in the Toad appliance, which are, uh, the product which is actually called Tool for Oracle Application Developers in, the, in its origin. And since then, you know, of course, we've been really supporting the needs of our customers, which includes Oracle and all of the other database variants. So as we've built our business, we've tried to remain neutral to the database tier because each company will have its preference for the vendor of his, their, his or their choice and where they're going to need help and what type of database they will need. So we've preferred to stay at the database tooling business to where we help enable each one of the database variants that is possible. So although we started out with a tool for Oracle application developers, we've quickly broadened that to every database variant because we're at the largest database tools vendor in the world. We're looking at how do we service people with multiple d databases in their back, Sybase, DB2, NoSQL variants, uh, a Couchbase or uh, MongoDB as well as Cloudera or Hadoop. All of the places where Dell partners with our hardware brethren to bring to customers those great databases that they prefer in their own customer environment. So that's interesting. So you mentioned all the NoSQL stuff, DB2 even. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys got a lot of customers wanting to run DB2, and of course we know DB2 is alive and well. Sybase, tons of mobile stuff, right? Do it running on Sybase since the SAP acquisition. That's a big focus. Database is really interesting again. It used to be kind of boring. But yeah, it's it was uh, quite a boring thing. It almost was a number of variants shrinking down to about five variants, yeah. and that was it. <laughs> and now there's been an explosion. That, uh, uh, database Engine's uh, website will track something like 140 different database variants right now across the major sectors, so graph databases and key value stores and documents as well as relational. 
And we think we can help with that complexity. Our business is understanding the tooling to leverage those databases, and that's what we do best, and so that's what we spent time on. How do we manage across those different database variants and help people make advantage of those So in the old days, you had to do some really serious heavy lifting to integrate to databases, so Toad allows you to sort of float, it's, it's obvious you're able to very quickly integrate with other database environments. It's really hard to pick a winner out of those 140. Well, you, I, you know. I don't think you do, right? I yeah. think you got to follow the customer and they're going to have multiple databases in their environment. So we want to make sure we can enable them to take advantage of that. In some cases, we're really doing uh, DBA functions. In some cases, we're doing development functions. In some cases, uh, we're doing uh, performance and other monitoring as well. Now, what about the StatSoft acquisition? We're going to talk about that a little bit. What, where does that fit into the portfolio? So as we looked at uh, the data management and then we have uh, integration and then we have the database, uh, second of the data warehouse tier and analytics tier, we really looked at what was the big challenge for customers. And it was the volumes of data are so excessively large that you can't do this by hand anymore. You really can't even do some of the discovery by knowing what the answer is first. You're going to have to utilize your data and look across the data. So what Statistica brings is pattern matching, data mining, uh, machine learning, and broad statistics to the play to be able to help the human scale understand the web scale of data. And that's really where we think the challenge will be in the future. Now, when you move forward even further, it won't only be in backwards looking analysis, you'll be embedding such algorithms into code or into your operational processes, and that's where we want to help customers. And that's what we see from the challenge of our, our existing customers, is they'll be reaching this state, and we want to help them get to that and manage that state while they're there. So how do you package that into solutions? Is it uh, part of a big data solution? Is it part of a, for the other hardware or service? Or? Well, right now we, we ship it separately, so it can be a desktop version, it can be an enterprise version where the enterprise itself collaborates across tiers for those people who are analytically inclined. As we go forward, we're actually looking at customers who are maybe in the customer service environment. And their, their customer service reps online don't need to know statistics, but they need some sort of website where they ask a question, the question goes off and does some complex statistical math, and comes back and does a protective analytics for them. So what we're enabling is the organization and the average user to use predictive analytics to make the company better, but they don't have to know analytics specifically. So there's an interface abstraction there that we're also So was that sort of the about. motivation to make the acquisition? I mean, because you got R out there, you got SPSS, you got SAS, you got all these packages that are pretty popular. What led you to the, to the notion that, hey, we, there's a gap in our portfolio. Is it customer driven? I mean, obviously everything Dell does is customer driven. <laughs> everything is that, customer but, driven. But, but, but help us understand that sort of, that move in the chessboard. So when we looked at uh, where we wanted to go, we saw a panoply of players in the self-service BI space. Just lots of players. And we thought either we dive into that space or we go above that space and add value even above that stage. And that's where we decided to go first, was it go up sta stage, go up to the higher tier of real value that is really going to be the challenge of that big data space. So uh, visualization alone won't solve the big data problem. And so as we looked at that higher stage, I needed a company that was really helpful to customers, had a great reputation, and had a very usable environment. Many of the environments in this advanced analytics stage are command line interface tools, whereas the Statistica product was a web-based, uh, sorry, a Microsoft kind of uh, environment-based, uh, so that you have very much the usable form factors of buttons and drill down menus. That's much easier for people to learn. I was looking for a team that was known for bringing the customer through the problem, as opposed to dumping off technology. Mm -hmm. And this team had just outstanding scores for that. And then the third thing that I was really looking for was a customer uh, vertical capability. And since Statistica is about 30 years old, they have a number of vertical solutions that they've built over time and solve customer problems. So pharmaceuticals, financials, manufacturing, and several other verticals where, across almost any vertical actually, where they've had to have the stories and the expertise where they said, look, I've helped out this peer of yours, I can help out you because I know the space, I know what they needed to achieve, and I can help you do that as well. And so I needed that expertise inside Dell to help customers through these problems. These are complex problems, and we need the help to make sure we can help the customers through mm -hmm. it. Matt, I'm wondering if you can explain for us, unpack really, your data management and analytics strategy. You made a number of acquisitions, of course, mm -hmm. Quest a couple of years ago, just talked about StatSoft and Statistica, mm -hmm. you know, 
where should we th what should we be thinking about how Dell fits in that ecosystem? Are you guys building really just a, a suite of software products that for, for the customer's need? Uh, how, how should we think about Dell and the, that kind of big data space? Well, in the big data space, we look at the raw capabilities of what we need, what a customer needs to compete. And when we look at that, it's a series of capabilities to manage the data that's raw, base, and tier. How do you then aggregate the data? pull data out of these various spaces that you have data. So in some cases you have it on-prem, in some cases you have it in one of your favorite databases. In some cases it's in an application in the cloud, say salesforce.com or NetSuite, and how do you repatriate that data or even a process in that one of those applications so that it can trigger or otherwise capture data inside your environment. And then you need to be able to do that for backward looking analysis as well as uh, looking forward into an actual transaction, enabling that to happen faster at the speed of the web and at the speed of big data. And so when we look at that tier, how do you manage it, how do you integrate it, and then how do you actually develop the capabilities to inform somebody or change their decision or speed their decision making process? That's where we're spending our time. So I'm wondering if you explain for us why someone would partner with Dell. If I look at some of the other players out there, they really have some of the data ownership. You know, Oracle owns the database, right. IBM has a whole portfolio, SAP has their piece in the marketplace. Why do customers turn to Dell for the, their analytics problems? Well, what we try to do is be agnostic. Agnostic to the database, agnostic to the data type, and agnostic to the data location. Because I don't own a database, I'm not going to ask you to buy it. I'm not going to shoehorn you into a shift and lift and move it out environment. I'm going to allow you to take advantage of the environment that you have and to be able to leverage that. And because we were so uh, strong in databases, what we've built is that capability to be agnostic to whoever you want in your premise, whatever you're using for whatever application or environment, we will work with you and we can work on top of that. We're not really into shifting your whole uh, application stack and trying to remove everything else. So, because I acquired businesses in this time frame, what I built were actually, I brought together companies that had to work in agnostic settings. They had to assume that they were deployed alongside many other technologies. Now, it's an accident of fate that I'm doing this now in this time frame versus uh, somebody else who may have done it 10, 15 years ago when you dedicated yourself to a single environment. But we like to think because we're doing that and because we're investing in this time period, we're addressing today's customer problem, which is data is going to live all over the place. You have to be agnostic to the problems of the customer and you have to help them achieve data, re reuse that data and use it for leveraging across any environment. I wonder if we could talk more about uh, the whole big data meme, which probably cuts again across the three businesses. I mean, the security related topics, yep. um, the certainly system management and information management. One of the areas that big data practitioners struggle with is you see all these Hadoop clusters being spun up and nobody's paying attention to data quality, data governance, and, and the like. Um, now, there is this emerging role of the chief data officer emerging mm -hmm. in certain industries like financial services and healthcare and, and government, but what specific, how do you look at that problem? It certainly fits smack dab in, in your you know, bucket. Um, do you have solutions there? Is that sort of white space? I wonder if you could talk about that. It, it, we have a little bit of both. So uh, inside Boomi, which is our integration product, it's the number one uh, iCloud, uh, excuse me, iPaaS product in the market. It's an integration platform as a service. Mm -hmm. what, what that allows you to do is really integrate across different environments. But when we go back to kind of trying to figure out what do we do there for cleansing, we, we, we saw that as people pick up data out of these environments, it's often not in the pattern they want to land it in. So it might be Matt Wolken instead of Wolken comma Matt. And so what we've allowed the ability to do is build MDM into the platform. So not only when you integrate with your point of, of the database, you can actually land the data as you intend it to be inside your environment. So I can pick it up as Matt Wolken, I can land it as Wolken comma Matt. And that's really one of the capabilities inside MDM. Inside Toad proper, we've actually built a, a capability to look at the data while you're trying to, to return it to the, for analysis and be able to scan that data and find out where are their errors, where are their null values, where are their empty cells, and then be able to clean those up and address those as you go forward. We're not truly historically a database uh, or a data cleansing environment but we're building those capabilities into the tools as you use them across the Well, and that's a good data quality example. Now, how about governance? Is that something that you'll leave to the ISVs, or do you see yourselves being dragged into that space by, by customers? Well, governance is a big part of it, and, and you know, we can go all the way into data ethics and how do you control data and how do you do proper use. Uh, 
Dell has an identity and access management business inside the software group mm -hmm. where we try and make sure we restrict the right use of data for the right reasons into the right owner's hands. And that would, would be one major asset where we would bring to the table to sort of collaborate around how do we actually govern the environment, make sure that the right people have the right access to the right data, that the data that is sensitive is protected and, and allow people to have, allow the government of the organization to work well so that it happens automatically. So I guess, well, I'm going to ask it differently. So okay. if, you, if you look at the software business you, in, in terms of the stack, you're the furthest up the stack. So um, I'm the closest to the application right. tier. So for how far up, <laughs> what kind of latitude do you have? How far up does, will Dell go? Uh, TBD? Or do you have some sort of hard swim lanes? Well, I, you know, I think right now we've got um, the capability around dealing with data, going up through the analytics, and being able to pass that off to people. With Boomi, we actually have a capability to help out people with their APIs and their application code and integrating the code. Mm -hmm. we're, we're trending to see is, I think there's going to be a boundary crossed. Really, analytics are going to sit in a lot of code. Really, analytics are going to be embedded into operations. Mm -hmm. And how do we enable that to happen? Um, right now, we're providing the user interface to your database, to your understanding, to your understanding of the code, and into your insights. And how far we go beyond that, we'll probably take it to the tier of where I think the average user who isn't the data scientist can use something. So I think the number of users who are data scientists is very small. The average analyst is a very large population. And so how do we enable that population to use analytics without becoming an analytic expert is where we'll probably take some time. Analytics as code is a powerful sort of concept, and so I guess it depends how far the industry takes that um, as to how, how much you can leverage that going forward. I, I don't think analytics will be separate for long. Yeah. I mean, there will You're be right. a tier that it does, and mm -hmm. there'll be a, you know, the proper analytic community, mm -hmm. but in order to, to progress at the speed of where we need to and looking at the data scale that we are, it'll end up a lot of it in code. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Matt, can you talk a little bit about Hadoop and Dell, Dell's place in that ecosystem? We had Cloudera on the keynote uh, mm -hmm. th this morning. You have partnerships with both Cloudera and Hortonworks. Uh, obviously, Dell provides infrastructure that, that Hadoop can sit on. How much are you integrating your analytics into Hadoop, and you know, wh wh where do you see Dell adding value to that whole well, Hadoop solution? We definitely have to look at the, you know, the Hadoop environment and have that part of the capability. There's not many customers who aren't currently thinking of or already have deployed Hadoop. Now, whether they deployed it as a technology or as a problem, as a sol solution to a problem is, is another issue, but um, we definitely look at Hadoop as being part of the environment that you need, uh, MapReduce or any other form, in order to be able to take advantage of the data. You're, there's an economics problem here. You can't store everything on tier one database. It would be too expensive for you. Uh, you also need the scale of MapReduce and functionality in the environment as well. So we definitely see Hadoop as fitting right smack dab with databases as proper, you know, historical OLTP or OLAP databases in the environment. It has to be there, has to be leveraged if you're going to in any way approach the large scale. And that's because it has an economic advantage in that space and it has a purpose. Long-term retention, data lakes, and other advantages. It, ha it is one of the key capabilities there and we do very much leverage it. So Toad, uh, uh, decision point, uh, sorry, data point will actually reach into those environments, be able to query those environments. Statistica will now be able to do that. Katanga, which was a product we bought uh, early in the days, was actually built to explicitly leverage MapReduce and do so with a usable GUI uh, that allowed people to gain advantage to that as well. So we're merging Katanga with Statistica and so that capability will sit inside the statistical platform and be available to the statistical It, it seems like a lot of the Hadoop projects, Matt, are, are focused on reduction on in investment. That's where they're getting the ROI today. Um, we see a, a baselining of a lot of traditional data warehouse and business intelligence spend and in moving some of that resource into Hadoop, but it's less expensive. So for every dollar they might spend on traditional data warehouses, they might spend 30 cents on some new Hadoop projects, yep. they're experimental. Now presumably you can make that up in volume. I wonder if you could comment on that. Are you seeing a similar dynamic? Are you seeing something different? So I see two things. One is, if you're familiar at all with the storage paradigm of information lifecycle management, sure. or putting the hot data on very expensive resources that are very fast, very expensive, and it's the longest term data, the historical data that's the slowest on disk or slowest capability. Hadoop is the new cost, tape right? kind of thing? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's turning into that. <laughs> but the same thing, what we see is there's two capabilities inside an environment for analytics. There's an exploratory process, mm -hmm. which is I don't know what I'm doing yet, and I don't know if there's any value here, but I need to play with two pieces of data, mash them together, and see if there's a correlation. Kind of filtering. Right, yeah. or <laughs> machine learning for that matter. Mm -hmm. yep. And then there's sort of the other stage, which is I know what I'm trying to do. I'm honing down the data to a few specific streams and I need that to be as fast as possible. Now you, you generally have different capabilities over here than you need over here. And so fast time, reduction of delay, or is what's required in this OLTP transactional environment. What's, what's required over here is flexibility, scale, effective cost. And so there are different environments in which Hadoop and has its home and is very, very proper and is the thing to use. And there's other places where it may not be. Now, some of the new Spark capabilities coming out with Dell in memory and capabilities like that will greatly affect what happens to the environment and bring some of that capability over. So you have a, a panoply of sort of solutions out there and each one has its proper home just like ILM did. And so some are faster, some are more expensive because of that. Some are heavier on compute and memory, which is the more expensive side of an environment. Some are more he heavily invested in disk, which is cheaper. And so those separate environments and those natural capabilities of each drive a different economic return and a different capability. And we think all of them have a home in, in uh, today's environment. Well, you're credible because you don't, you don't have a database you know, right. the, uh, uh, in this hunt, so you don't really care whatever the customer wants to do. Um, Amar Awadala has a great analogy, which is the traditional data warehouses like the SLR camera and the the new stuff on Hadoop is like your, your smartphone. Yeah. Um, but then of course that leads to which business do you think is going to grow more, or what's going to grow faster, where's the innovation coming from? <laughs> so that's when the discussion gets kind of interesting. But, uh, but I think again, from, from Dell's standpoint, if I understand it correctly, let the customer decide and you'll bring a solution. Yeah, I want to be agnostic. I, I want to make sure that Dell is agnostic to those problems, uh, specific, we, we do want to build great capabilities for them and we want to make sure that cu customers see great value in what we can do for those environments. But we don't want to force the customer into one particular environment. We want to enable them to use their choice of great technology partners that we have at Dell. Any surprises? We're running out of time here, but any surprises in, in Dell's software business and the way it's progressed? Anything that really you know, shocked you or you didn't expect that, that was an outcome that's been you know, pleasant or you know, exciting? Well, I think uh, the thing I get most excited, when I came to Dell, there was almost no software in the environment. Uh, we had made a few investments and, and they were sort of scattered to the wind across the organization. Bringing them together and acquiring all of the new assets has brought us sort of a strength and capability of management, skill sets and capabilities. But as Dell has grown too, it's now part of the conversation. And the first conversation was a forced conversation. Make sure you say Dell and software together. Now we're seeing that line almost just disappear. And it's just now there's an end-to-end -end capability here and Dell will help you with it. Even here at the Dell world, uh, there's a whole set of lanes of just information and data management tools and how do you derive insights and, and get it, data out. That wouldn't have been here two years ago, three years ago. And so that changed and seeing you know, the, the thousands of people here at Dell world to have that purview as they were just walking around the floor as an equal participant to the technology that Dell has, has been the most pleasing and uh, rewarding uh, factor across that time. So sort of last, I'll give you the last word, and it sort of relates to, I think, the comment you just made. Where, where, where are we going to, what are we going to think about Dell next five years, and what role is software going to play? How, how will observers be looking at Dell five years on? Well, I think it will be much more of, instead of an individual technologies or set of technologies, I mean, we're, we're, we built our business on laptops and servers, and, and that should in no way be taken away from us but also think about the, the larger environment and the larger problem that the customer has and how we can help solve that. I think that will be the sort of the change. Instead of a single or a couple of technologies, it'll be more of a person, a company, an entity that can help you through the challenge and problem. All right, Matt, thanks very, very much for coming to theCUBE. We have to leave it there. Really appreciate the update on the business and the progress that you've made. Thanks, Dave, thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. All right, keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is theCUBE, we're live from Dell World 2014. Be right back. <laughs>